Tim, who's your football goat? Who is the goat? In, in college football. Whew. Your lifetime with your eyes, what you've seen, just who's the goat? I don't want to throw Archie Griffin up there just because – and I, I throw him in the top five just because – he is the only Ohio State Heisman Trophy winner that has won it two years in a row. I mean, period. I mean, nobody will win. He's the only one ever to do it. Yeah, I mean, nobody in the Heisman history or even now is, is going to win it. Now, the only person I think who should have won it twice is Tim Tebow. But that's another discussion somewhere else. But I would say, uh, gosh, Barry Barry's good and Herschel, Herschel Walker and, or Barry Sanders. I because Barry's so humble and quiet, you really don't remember him other than from his play. Um, oh, but who – gosh, man. And Bo Jack oh, – I don't know who I would put at number one. I, it's a toss-up. It really is. I'm going to throw mine out there real quick just because mine's, mine, I knew, I knew when we were talking about it exactly who it was. I think the most exciting player to ever play college football um, in my eyes was Tim Tebow. I think he he's the GOAT. He's everything you could ever want in a football player, much less, a, you know, a quarterback of his caliber. Yes. Um, I don't – I've never been a Florida fan at all, but I, I don't remember missing many games when he was playing – uh, there's always something to tune in and watch. You always knew something special was going to happen. Um, you know, I'm a Bo Jackson ride or die guy, and y'all know that, you know. Um, but, you know, for my lifetime, my eyes, don't, it don't get any better than Tim Tebow. That's my football goat. I, I agree. Yep. I agree. All right, Cody, go to us. <laughs> <laughs> well, I figured I would list something because everybody. I figured I kind of had an idea of different people. The people would list, so I went with my boy Baker, and I wrote down his stats and all that. Just personally, based off of, I knew you were going to say Tebow. It was either going to be Baker or Cam, but I knew way more about Baker's stats than I did about Cam's. Granted, Cam balled out in Auburn, but I mean, Baker. Uh, just I've never – that's kind of – I don't think – you know, like we all find one player that we fall in love with and we're like, this is like my favorite player I've ever watched. And for me, I never had more fun watching when he planted the flag at the shoe. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I wrote I wrote his stats down and all that if y'all want to hear it. If not, uh, no biggie. I, well, I think y'all – here's, here's – for anybody else that may watch this, this – um, I want you to go over a few of a few of his stats because me and you talked about this, and so of course I'm a nerd. So I statted him. It's really shocking how good his college stats really were. People don't realize stat wise how good he was. They let people let the poor management in Cleveland be a reflection upon his overall career, and they also look at the system in. Oklahoma, which granted, I mean, they, I think they're QBU. You can't really dispute it if you ask me. You got, nope. Every, they've had three first rounders in the last three years. You had Bradford. I mean, he balled out and stuff. So that's just kind of, I think they're QBU for sure. But yeah, I think that's the issue is that people, people associate him with the Browns and they, they really want, they wanted him to be such a bust because of his attitude. And that's why a lot of people are happy. But, I mean, I got his stats pulled up right here. So, I just wrote his OU ones down because he didn't play a full season at Texas Tech. But in 2015, he played, he played 13 games. Uh, he had 269 completions out of 395 attempts. Completion rate was – percentage was 68.1. Threw for 3,700 yards, 36 TDs, and seven interceptions. In – 2016, he also played 13 games, had 254 completions out of 358 attempts, completion rate is 70.9, threw for 3,965 yards, 40 touchdowns, and eight interceptions. 
options. And then his Heisman season, he played 14 games, had 285 completions out of 404 attempts, 70.5 completion rate percentage, threw for over 4,627 yards, 43 touchdowns, and six interceptions. And I don't know, man. Like, that's that's the player that really, really made me fall in love with college football. Uh, like, I grew up moving around and stuff. But, yeah, I just – I like like Sammy and I talk about it a lot. I'm sure he can jump in. You guys can add what you want as well while we're discussing Baker. But that's that's for me. That That's who I would call my GOAT. You know, I understand the Tim Tebow cases. And I just think that if Mike Stoops weren't the coach in the Rose Bowl, that they would have won the national championship his, his Heisman year. Well, and, and just kind of piggybacking off that with just a little touch, I mean, you're looking at a guy with a QBR and the one – like the 190 – 195s plus probably for his career. Yeah, um, no, it, that, that's, that's what it's going to be. And that is – I mean, there's only a couple of guys that are higher than that, and then you look at all the guys that are behind him, and it's – I mean, there's a lot of respect that needs to go – to the abilities that he actually has, I think a lot of people overlook. Um, you know, I enjoy I enjoy watching him play for the Browns. I, he, I think he's very entertaining. I really do believe he's going to have a breakout year this year. Go Browns! Um, yeah, I, I, I really think he's I think he's going to have a breakout year. I think this is going to be their year. I, I look him. God, I hope look, so. I look I look for him to make it to the playoffs. Yeah, I, I, really I think so too. I think. Uh... I think it's safe to say that it's probably the Ravens division again, but I definitely have them second. I don't think Pittsburgh is going to do anything impressive. Um, and I forget that Cincinnati exists. Well, and they're um, going to be off the road. I know everyone's on the Burrow train and stuff. But, yeah, I think I think this new head coach was what Baker in particular needed. Yeah, he needed a more structured, a more, like, in your face type coach to get him get him motivated and everything like that and stay motivated and you can tell and you know since I'm a Browns fan I do been watching their training camp and you can tell in the videos that Baker is focused he's going around to players and you know co- even like you know kind of getting getting their grills if they screw something up yeah and he's he's always been like that he was like that at OU especially you know and people I don't know man people don't like People don't like cocky players. I wouldn't really call it cocky. I think he just – he's always played with a chip on his shoulder, even since his high school days yeah. and stuff but in Texas. But, but yeah, I think I think this year will be good for him. I definitely think that – I think now that – I'm hoping that their head coach is competent enough to realize you have fucking Odell Beckham Jr. on your team. Yep, and, you and Jarvis Landry. And Jarvis. So and not those, to those two, man. In the background, in the backfield. Exactly. So there's no reason other than coaching that I've I felt I I thought Hugh was a moron. I didn't think Kitchens was any better. No, Kitchens um, was a freaking idiot. Yeah, I, I think I think that's been Baker's problem, man. Is he went from having Lincoln Riley, who's I say the greatest co- college offensive mind right now, currently, and it shows a lot of NFL teams are trying to take what he's doing in college and apply it to their teams. So he went to go from someone with such a great offensive mind like that to go to a more defensive minded coach. It was probably a bit of a shock for him. What about you, Mark? Who's your goat? Okay, uh, of course. There's a. Couple. I already know who. I already know who's one of the who you're going to say, but I want to hear <laughs> the reasoning. Uh, okay. Well, actually, a couple. Well, like y'all, y'all have already hit on one. Tim Tebow. He was. He like you said. He was. Uh, beyond a shadow of a doubt one of the greatest players greatest humans out there yeah no, no question no doubt about that um another one not necessarily uh, in the goat category you know he did win a heisman but he was the more the watch this gentleman play football he was more the more entertaining side of that now i gotta say johnny football for that one i'm glad yeah. you did. see i, I wanted I to agree. list him but i thought I thought that I would get shit for it. But, yeah, I, I was a big Johnny fan, man, not to cut into yeah, what, I mean, what you were saying. But I've never – I just – I'm sure you'll attest to it, too. You know, like, there – people like to say, oh, we had Mike Evans. He just threw it out there and got lucky. But, man, I – like, that game against Alabama, I've never yeah. seen anyone shred yeah. Alabama. No. And, and th- that I love entire, Johnny that entire, that, that entire year, he was 
they were they were thumping people. But then another one, of course, uh, my old time goat. Even though he never won a Heisman, never won you know a national championship, is Pat White from West Virginia. I mean, he was the only quarterback during the BCS era to go to four BCS bowl games and win them all. And not to mention, they gave West Virginia, when they played Oklahoma, a less than 2% chance of winning against Oklahoma. Then they beat Oklahoma, they beat Georgia, and all those, you know, big miraculous games. They beat Clemson as well. Oh, yeah. Well, they, yeah, they smoked Clemson, yeah. And just to touch on that for me, like, I totally agree, like him or hate him. He was a phenomenal college ball player. You know, he may not have panned out in the NFL, but he he was fun to watch. Like him or hate him, he was fun to watch, and he was very good at what he did. Uh, so I, I agree with that one. Totally. Are you are you saying Johnny or Johnny White or both? Johnny, uh, yeah. Johnny and Pat. You know, Pat. You know, if you're if you live in West Virginia, if you've been you know during that era, if you watch West Virginia football during that era, you have, to have you have to have a little special place in your heart for Pat White just because he really brought West Virginia football back to predominance. Um, you know, where West Virginia had always kind you know always kind of linger in the middle of the pack. He um, he he he's what has made it possible for them to go into the Big Twelve and to continue the success that they've had. Um, and if we're talking about goats from that era, you know, I, one of my personal favorite goats from from I'm going to go ahead and throw this one out there too is the uh, the runaway beer truck. Uh, Owen, Schmidt. Owen Schmidt. You don't you, you can't ask for a better story for a guy to come from where he come from and to be embodied. He's West Virginia embodied and to have the success he had. I was watching some of his highlights the other day, and if you haven't if if, if your mind's running uh, to where you're not remembering exactly how he was. Go look up some of his uh, highlights when he was at WVU, and it'll kind of refresh you on why I'm saying he's a GOAT. He just uh, – he was he was bigger than the game at West Virginia. It was just, an ama- just a great guy, an amazing player. So, just kind of want to throw that out there too. So, are we discussing – are we discussing other positions as well? Because I have a name I would like to throw out you. As well. Yeah, I mean, if there's if there's anybody you want to throw, just kind of throw out there, just uh, you know, personal goats or whatever, throw them out there. Kind of, I would, I would say Ryan Broyles, man. I don't know if y'all watched. I know you at least watched him in 08. but uh, yeah, I just whenever I moved here and stuff, that was the big big receiver that they had and. I think for me, like everyone, we I love C.D. Lamb. Everyone loves him, but my favorite OU receiver was Ryan Broyles. And man, if he wouldn't have gotten hurt in Detroit, him and Megatron together would have been something fierce. But I mean, just to read off some of his stats here, man. I mean, he had over sixteen hundred ca- yards and catches in just one season and receiving, and he had fourteen touchdowns that year that he did it same thing he had he averaged he averaged over over a thousand per season which is pretty solid you know as far as wide receivers go especially when you consider how many great receivers oklahoma has had yeah Yeah. but that's just another name i'd throw out there i always i loved watching him play and he's a he's a really nice guy too really really friendly and all that i talk to him here and there on twitter and things like that but yeah, he, that's just another name I'd throw out there personally. I don't know if y'all know anything about him. If you don't, go go watch some highlights. I'm sure I'm sure y'all will enjoy some of the crazy stuff he did on the field. Tim, you were talking – well, let me uh, – Tim, Tim was talking about Archie Griffin just a, a little bit ago. Tim, if you can, talk a little bit more about Archie and women, multiple Heismans. The criteria in the 70s is uh, day and night compared to the criteria – I think that the, they base the Heisman on now in college football. Um, the reason I think you will never see another two-time Heisman Trophy winner is because it's um, more of a – well, let's give this guy the – the same way they treat the MVP in, in, in the NBA. Well, this guy got it last year, so this guy, he, he, he's, he, he's done 
great this year, even better than last year, but we need to give it to this guy because he didn't get it last year. It, it's that kind of deal. Um, Voters fatigue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, yeah, or who's who's most popular. Or it, it doesn't matter if, if they're really great or not. It's just whoever the fans like the most. But uh, as far as what it took uh, for Archie Griffin, I, man, what was that, seven, 1970? Uh, 75. Was it 75-76? It's either 75, 76, or 74, 75. I can't remember which one it was. I, I can't remember off of that either. But uh, um, th- that he dominated the field for the Buckeyes. He really did. Now, uh, and then when he went to play for, I mean, he did okay in the pros when he played for Cincinnati. Um, he, he did all. He he was okay. Of course, when you, when you talk about college football translating to pro football, boy, that is such a big gap. That's why you got guys like Johnny Manziel. Who can who can sh- you know Brett Favre the thing anywhere on the field and you can make completions compared to you can't do that in the pros you just can't I mean uh, that's why you got like I said uh, it's why you got guys like Johnny Mansell Kyler Murray even even Baker Baker had good I mean he has great stats don't get me wrong yes it but you won't see that in pro you just won't see it and I think. Uh, but no, as far as Archie Griffin, man, I just and it's not I'm not I'm not being biased either, just because he was a Buckeye. Uh, but uh, what you what you had to accomplish and do back then to win two in a row is just is just mind boggling. It really is. Well, that shows you where the league's gone because back then, you know, it was more of a running back league. It was about right. the ability of your running back to, to hit that to hit those holes. And then now football is more about the ability of your quarterback to um, marshal you, you, your guys on the field. And, I, you know, that's, that's what gets me about Oklahoma, you know, with um, all the success they've had at quarterback. But it's because, you know, not only are they getting good athletic guys, but they're getting guys who can soldier the field. And right. they've done it consistently. And, and to me, that's, that's amazing uh, as a scout to be able to, to say, you know, these are your field marshals. This is the guy. This is your guy.